Hello NBC developer. Today I'd like to talk to you about state management in NBC. I know, if you're an NBC purist, you're cringing at the thought. However, there are certain circumstances where it makes a lot of sense to store state in your NBC application. I'm going to show you how to create a session state value provider. It's an elegant way to store state in your NBC application. Let's take a look, shall we? So let's start off. We'll create an internet application. I know some NBC purists that would bristle at the idea of sessions in their NBC applications. But in the real world, there are times where it makes sense to leverage sessions. And yes, you can do it like this, directly from your controller. Uh, you can even do it directly from your views. Uh, let's take a look at that. You can set sessions here in your controller and then display them in your views. And you could, uh, you could either read them directly from your view if you want to, or you could set a view bag like this. However, that breaks the MVC pattern. So first I'll show you this. Set it to the view bag. And we'll see that that works. There you go. Well, we need to refresh it so that it actually hits the controller's action first. It gets set. There we go. And then it displays the view. So you can actually do it that way, and a lot of people do. Um, however, it, it really breaks the MVC pattern to have state like that. And it really makes it difficult for testing and unit testing your controllers and your views separately without state. So what we'll do instead is create a session value provider. Uh, first, we'll create a class to uh, store that information. Call it current user. Pass that into our view. Um, actually, into our action method here. We'll pass that to our view. And we'll bind to that model. So value providers provide an abstraction over where the values that the model binder actually uses, where those values actually come from. And the value provider factory was introduced in MVC2. So here we're using the current username. That's the uh, key for the session. And we'll create a little common folder here. I've created some of the code already to save some typing. Here we go. We'll create our session value provider. And the uh, value provider factory, as I said, was mentioned, was uh, introduced in MVC2. So all you have to do is derive from that and then have the uh, get value provider, in this case, our session value provider. And just generate that. 
I have some of that code created here already. So it implements iValueProvider interface. And that has the getValue and contains prefix and add value. And uh, inside of that, I've got this dictionary here, uh, string and the value provider result. And so all it's doing is actually looking at uh, whether the value already exists. If it does, then we're setting that value, uh, the dictionary, with that key to the value. And uh, notice the value provider result. Uh, otherwise, we need to add the value. So we'll do that. Add based on the key. And again, value provider result. And there we go. And then we have the get value with the value provider result. Uh, try to get the value if it exists, otherwise, it'll return null. And then we have to uh, add that so we'll do value provider factories dot add now we're going to change this in a minute but I want to show you first what happens if we just add it like this session value provider factory build that and let's uh, try that out put a breakpoint here so we can see where the sessions are being actually set and uh, we'll take a look at that there's a lot of value providers built in like query string value provider form value provider and um, in MBC3, we introduced the JSON value provider, so you can bind directly to J incoming JSON. Okay, so here's the model, and you can see on our model already the, uh, the current username has been set from the existing session value. And there we go. Now we have clean model providing the session values, and, and we're not using it directly from our view. However, what if an attacker were to come along and just say, okay, query string, uh, current username equals da da da. Ah, evil hacker. There we go. That's not good. You don't want the end user to be able to easily override your session values, right? Um, so the reason that that's happening is because uh, it's just looking at the key, right? And uh, and the order in which it's added here. So when I do an add, it just adds it at the bottom of the stack underneath the query string value providers and form value provider and everything else. So instead, let's go ahead and insert that as the very first uh, value provider. Yeah, so we insert it zero at the beginning of the list. So it takes precedence over any of the others. We don't want people to be able to change uh, our, our parent session values. Uh, here we go. So now if we try the same thing, um, there we go, it's still Robert, so now it hasn't been overridden. And we have very clean, we can test that and isolate it, uh, change out the model, and do unit testing. And that's pretty much it. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please join us next time.